Welcome back. This is an Alex homework video on using a zero order integrated rate law to find concentration change. Okay, an integral uh, has to do with calculus. So it's just a, it's, it's a calculus thing based upon the rate law. And the rate law in this case is zero order. And zero order, anything to the zero power is one. So essentially, the concentration doesn't change for this material. So if you have if you have a concentration that's zero order in the rate, that means it's not going to get bigger or smaller. You're going to have the the same amount at the beginning and the end. It's it's in zero. So if that is true, then the rate is simply going to be equal to your rate constant. So that's going to be what I'd start with. So I just know that, that if I have a zero order, then my rate equals k. And the if you were to take that equation and do an integral, calculus integration on it, this is what you'd get. You'd get the, the um, molar concentration of whatever uh, material you're looking at, we'll just call it a, is going to equal your molar concentration of your original amount. Okay, so that's A sub O. A sub O is your initial concentration. So your concentration will be equal to that minus the product of your constant times time. Now, I wouldn't derive that in my mind. I would simply know that if you're going to do an integration rate law, memorize this. This is an equation that you could easily uh, write down and know before a test. So the constant molar concentration of A equals the molar concentration of the initial concentration of A, whatever it was at the beginning, minus your rate constant times the time in seconds it takes to do it. All right, so that's, uh, that's pretty easy. Now in this case, we're looking at, what are we looking at? Uh, dinitrogen monoxide. So I guess I could easily just uh, recopy this as, as N2O equals the concentration of N2O originally minus KT, okay? And then you are asked to find the time. After how much time is there only 250 millimoles left? Okay, so you start with 500 millimoles in three liters. Okay, I already see a red flag here. Um, the brackets mean molar concentration and molarity, if you remember molarity, I'll put it up here, um, molarity is going to equal, sorry, molarity is going to equal moles over liters. That's what molarity is. So I don't like millimoles. So I'm going to look here, I'm just going to write it up here to get it out of the way. 500 millimoles. I want to get rid of millimoles. So I'm going to put millimoles on the bottom and moles on the top. How many millimoles are there in a mole? Well, like a thousand millimeters in a, in a meter. So there's a thousand millimoles in one mole. So that means I'm going to divide 500 by a thousand and I end up with 0.5 moles. All right. So if I want to find out if I want to find out how much that is, that's 0.5 moles. That's what, um, that's what my initial concentrations were. And then at the end, I want um, 250 millimoles. Well, I'm going to do the very same thing. I'm going to divide by 1,000. So at the end, I'm going to have 0.250 uh, millimoles. I'm sorry, moles. Okay, so that's how much stuff you have. Now the molarity, you would divide by three liters. Okay, so, so then you're asked to find how much time. So let's take this KT example and just solve for T. So get T by itself, and I have the concentration of N2O minus, um, and that's going to be, um, initial 
Okay, so that this is my initial concentration because I'm on the other side. Minus um, my new concentration divided by K. So that's just a little bit of algebra. All right. All right, so let's just start filling this in. So the, the initial concentration is going to be 500 moles divided by 3 liters. And my new concentration is going to be 0.25 moles divided by 3 liters. All right, so what is that going to be? So the, so the first one is going to be, um, I'm going to need point, let's see. Let me just divide this out. 0.5 divided by 3. And so I'm going to get T equals, I'll put this in parentheses, 0 0.0166666. So let's just round it to 67. Molarity minus, and then here's my new one. So this is going to be 0 0.083333. I'll do maybe three of them. Okay. Divided by K. So what's my K? It tells me at the top that it is 0 0.0027 molar per second. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get molars on the top, divide by molars, divide again, and I'll end up with seconds as my answer. All right, so calculator, 0.1667 minus 0 0.08333 equals, divided by 0 0.0027 equals. And I'm going to end up with... 30.877777, okay? So write down some numbers, okay? And now they're asking for how many significant digits? Two, two significant digits. Well, the three and the zero are significant. The zero rounds up to one. So your answer is gonna be three, one. Then I always put a decimal point. I do not trust Alex. It'll count it wrong, I bet. So that's three, one point, and then what's my units? Seconds. And that, I think, is the right answer. Okay. So not so bad. You, ha you would have to memorize this formula. I would hate to derive this, uh, but if you memorize it, it's just putting it in and solving for, in this case, time. So I hope that helps.